I always have something in mind to say about the homily of the gospel. And when I read the gospel in the church, another idea comes to mind. And the idea that came to mind is, it is really quite sobering when Christ reminds us that even when we love the, the people who are, who are around us, we are not much better than sinners. You know? In fact, he's absolutely correct. We are sinners. It's quite sobering. But basically, whenever a math teacher writes a formula on the board, an equation, math or physics teacher, like force equals mass times acceleration, that formula is always true at all times. And there's no way out of it. This is the truth. And he gives examples to it where it can be, where we can see it. And today, Christ writes for us that formula that for us to be Christians, we have to love. And the example that he set for us is the highest example that ever can be given. It's where in the math world and in the physics world, like when the time goes to infinity or when that variable goes to infinity, right? Christ went to infinity and he showed us that love on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. So today, Christ commands us to love our enemies. Two words, or three words, two words in Arabic. Three words, love your enemies. Love your enemies. They are the most, the deepest three words in the whole scripture. Love your enemies. What does that even mean? So, we all know about the four types of love. The eros, which is the romantic love. The philia, which is the brotherly love. The storgi, which is the empathy love. And the agape, which is the divine love. And of course, people try to put it in different levels, as if the agape is the highest one, the philia is the brotherly, right? The, the eros is the lowest because it's the romantic and it's the physical love where there is physical intimacy. But actually, in reality, the reality of the matter is, is God loves us in all of these four loves. All of it. It's even the Eros one. The Eros, he wants to be us united with him, he, which, is, which is actually what that means. He loves us as a brother. And, and we see the word, we see the love conversation between the Lord Jesus Christ and Peter on the lake after the resurrection. And he asks him, Peter, agapa say me. Do you love me? The divine love. And Peter answers him, Lord, you know that I feel you, that I love you, the brotherly lover, that you are, you are like my brother, you are like my friend. So I even couldn't tell that, that, right, but that he's even the divine love. But still, Christ answered, asked him three times, do you love me divinely? Do you love me in the agape love? And Peter answered him three times, I love you, the, 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 the brotherly or the friendship love. But love here, brothers and sisters, that the Lord is asking us to give to our enemies is not an emotion. It's an act of love. It's an act because the emotions are in the mind and they, are, they started with the soul. And when we say, when Christ says, love your enemies, it doesn't mean, it doesn't make any sense to mean that I think of that person as my enemy and I have to love him. It doesn't make any sense. He's either your enemy or you love him. But basically what it means, because for us Christians, we have no enemies. We have no enemies. We, we see everyone with the eyes of Christ. We see everyone as our beloved. We see everyone as Christ. We see everyone as the image of God. How are we to see anyone as enemies? But what that means is that if anyone looks at you as your enemy, as his enemy, if somebody from there who considers you his enemy, don't act and don't react according to him. Don't let him decide how to act. Stand on, make your house on the house of rock. 
make it stand of, on the foundation of rock. Your rock is Christ, and no matter how they feel, no matter how they feel, you're always looking at them with love. And you are always act towards them with love. And we see that every single day with God, because when we sin, when we choose to sin, or when we choose not to pray, when we choose to depart from God, we are actually choosing God to be our enemy. We don't want to be union, united with God, neither in prayer, and when we sin, especially we're going the, the opposite way. We're making him our enemy, and Satan is our friend. And when we do that, and all humanity does this every day, every second of the day, for, since the beginning of age, and if we were to react, like if God were to react humanly, if he were to react humanly, he would, he would say, you know what? You guys are not treating me well. From now on, there is no sun that's going to that's gonna start from the east. Never. This is the last day that you're going to see the sun. Last day you're going to see the rain. Last day you're going to see any gift. You, you, have, you have no more. But that doesn't, that's not what God does. It's totally the opposite. We still see the sun every day in its perfect timing, every single day, day after day, week after week, year after year, ages after ages. God does not change. Love does not change. Love does not ask for it itself. Love never fails. The whole, the whole gospel of love, 1 Corinthians 13. Love does not ask for itself. Love gives. Love only knows how to give. Love only knows how to give and only considers the other. Hence, when Christ, when Christ tells us, lend and do not expect anything in return, somebody might not believe that. So, one of our parishioners once asked me, is God funny? You know? And of course I tell him, of course not. He, he, doesn't, he, he wants to make who laugh. But if we look at it in concept, if we look at humanity and compare what humanity is doing compared to this, people kill each, each other for not getting enough benefit or enough of, their, of, their, of what they lent. Brothers kill each, each other for money. And you're asking us to give and not expect anything in return? Yes, and I'll tell you why. One of my favorite stories, my absolute favorite story, of St. Paisius. He would say one of the biggest tragedies that happened in modern age is two things. It's the car and the fridge. Well, why, St. Paisius? The car is good. It makes us travel. He says no. Because before the car, people were riding on, on animals, on donkeys, on cows, on horses. And when that animal got sick, the owner of that animal would feel sorry for the animal, would have compassion on the animal. His heart will be with the animal. His heart will have tenderness. But now if your car gets, gets broken or made an accident, your heart is not on, you have no compassion. You're sad because of the money, because you lost some money. And same thing for the fridge. People now, buy extra food, and they store it in their fridges and their freezers. And we're guilty as, as, as any people, right? But before, that wasn't the case. If people had extra food, they would give it to the, to the people around them, who actually need. People ha were thinking of, other, of even animals, of even other people, of even other people. So when you lend money to somebody, is your heart on the money that you're lending him? Or is your heart on the person that you're lending? Where is your heart? But if you're lending and your heart is on the money, you're really not lending him. You're, you're making yourself look as the good man. Yeah, look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some money. You're actually, actually glorifying yourself. But if you're disconnected from the money that you're giving to that person, then you are like Christ. Then you are like Christ. So, love your, uh, your enemies, the word in Greek is agape, agapas, agapas your enemies, love them, see them, we see them as your brothers, see them, you want to be united with them, even if they don't want you, even if they, but you're going to tell me, well, they hurt me, 
They offended me. They neglected me. They did a lot, so and so and so to me. And the, 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 the whole center of that conversation is what? Me. Me. Me, myself, and I. How much, if somebody hurts you and you're hurt, this is a way, this is a, a chance for you to remember how much you hurt Christ. Because it's a mirror of your own, of your own weakness. May God grant us the love of Christ to give to others through the praise of the Theotokos of St. Basil. Amen.